Get back to the bigger picture of immigration and the astonish, astonishing figures that show that since Labor came to power, 1.15 million people have come into this country, 1.15 million immigrants. That is a record, the highest levels of immigration this country's ever seen. Let's catch up with macro business chief economist Leith Van Omsel and joining me live from Melbourne. Uh, thanks for talking to us, Leith. You take a a bigger interest in these immigration issues than most economists, and you have a different line about it because we all we always hear from economists and, and politicians that immigration is good for our economy, and we understand that. But it depends at what level, doesn't it? And especially with a housing crisis and a cost of living crisis, are these numbers too high at the moment? Oh, absolutely, Chris. I think Labor has lost control of the border, to be quite frank. I mean, in Labor's first federal budget in October 2022, it forecasts that net overseas migration would be 470,000 over its first two years. Instead, we've had net overseas migration around a million. So that means it's, you know, basically double what Labor thought. And as a result, you know, that is the primary driver of why we have a rental crisis around the country, because we've allowed in an extra 500,000 people, roughly. And that's, we haven't built enough houses for them, obviously. You can't do that when you have such high numbers. And unfortunately, Chris, the, the, the data that we've received so far this year suggests that net overseas migration hasn't come down much, if at all. So for the first five months of this year, according to the monthly net permanent long-term arrivals data, which is a proxy for net overseas migration, we had uh, uh, 243,000 net arrivals in the first five months. And that's up uh, from around 208,000 last year, which was a record year, obviously. And that's up from about 150,000 in 2019, uh, just before the pandemic hit. So the numbers are still off the charts. They are off the chart now, uh, and we know that because Labor admits it even. As you say, Labor have promised to reduce it. They want to pretty much halve the immigration rate that we've got at the moment, and uh, disturbing to hear you say they're, they're making no inroads in doing that. I like to talk about last year to give people a concept of the numbers uh, when we added uh, in net terms about 500,000 people to this country. 550. That's yeah, that, that's that's the population of Tasmania. We, we, we added Tasmania to the country in one year. It's clearly unsustainable. And what, and what does my head in? We've done all that. We've had such high levels of immigration, Leith, yet we've still got a skills crisis. So we're obviously not getting in the people that we need. That's right. See, unfortunately, we, we run what's called, a, well, what I call a whack-a-mole migration system. So we try and solve one problem by bringing in people. Often the people we bring in then don't don't work in the area that they're supposed to. And then you just create other problems. So, you know, the, the latest one is we need to bring in a whole bunch of builders to help build homes to keep up with this massive immigration that we've got. That's all well and good. But even if we did that, can you imagine if you brought in, say, half a million builders? Well, then you're going to create shortages in healthcare and all these other areas because those builders are going to need houses themselves, but also all these other things. And then the solution then will be to bring in more people for that and then all these other areas. And then you end up with a building shortage again. So, you know, the, the whole system just really needs to be cut right back. We need to lower immigration to a level that's 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 uh, commensurate with the nation's ability to build homes and infrastructure. And we also need to make sure that, that it's very highly skilled. And these sorts of skills that we can't create domestically, that's the sort of immigration we need. Unfortunately, it's sort of uh, quantity over quality, uh, yeah. you know, migration system. It's a worry uh, and another issue we'll, we'll keep track of. I just want to get your thoughts too on the... Uh uh, wage growth stats from yesterday, uh, obviously concerning there that a lot of the wage growth is actually coming through public servants or private providers to large government schemes like the NDIS. So, in fact, while wages are going up, it's all of us taxpayers who seem to be uh, fueling a, a certain sector of wage earners. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, the, the public sector wage growth was 0.9% for the quarter, and that was actually slightly below the inflation rate. So they're still going backwards. It's also worth pointing out that the public sector wages have actually grown slightly less than private sector since the pandemic began. The bigger problem, Chris, is that we have a, a private sector economy that's effectively in recession, and the entire economy is being held up by public spending. So just to put some numbers around that, uh, the private sector, the market sector is what economists call it, uh, increased jobs by only 6,000 in the last year in a population increase of 650,000 and all of Australia's jobs growth pretty much came from them from government aligned sectors so that's wow. pretty unsustainable if you ask me and a lot of that's related to obviously the NDIS and aged care spending and that's you know obviously taxpayer funded and not particularly sustainable all these numbers on immigration and wages show that uh, there's a reckoning ahead uh, and uh, we haven't started to tackle some of these big issues thanks so much for joining us Leith. I appreciate it Leith.